Hi, I'm Yenna. I'm a modern Ajima. I'm hopefully gonna make this a short, quick, sweet little 23 for 23 video. I said in my faves of 2022 video that upon reflection, I just didn't have the variety that I am used to in my reading diet and that's something that I really want to change and incorporate into my 2023 reading year. I'm pretty sure that every time I've said, I'm going to read this, I, I didn't. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm going to work on that. I will endeavor to read all 23 of these this year. But you know, it's fun to talk about books regardless. And also, the other stipulation of, my, of this 23 for 23 is I own all of these books. I can't be the only one. In 2020, I discovered BookTube, just heard so many books being talked about. I bought a lot. And needless to say, I didn't read all of them. So I'm going to try to fix that it, this year. I'm going to try to read what I have already. I'm going to try to vary out by genre. I've thought of 23 genres. So let's start. Let's get into it. Genre number one, art books. I love art books. I'm an art major. I I read Myra Kalman's Cake two years ago. It was so cute. It was so sweet. Um, I'm intrigued by her illustrations. She also hand writes her books. I want more of that. Art books, more art books this year. Genre number two, poetry. I have heard so much about on Milton's Paradise Lost. I also want to get into more classics this year. This whole book uh, I have been told is poetry. When I read Saigon by Phuc Tran, he mentions Paradise Lost in one of his chapters. It was one of my favorite chapters. I think it's time. I want to read Paradise Lost. This is also very much a classic that like English majors, lit students, lit majors study in school. It's time. Genre number three, NYRB. They deserve their own, <laughs> their own category to themselves. So many people have talked about Stoner by John Williams. I need to read this. Genre number four, nature. I think in 2020, no, 2021, I read The Overstory by Richard Powers. I would categorize that as like a nature read. I don't really know much about Pig Years by Ellen Guidos. I think I saw this included in like the New York Times list of best books of 2022. I have a brown thumb, really it's a black thumb, but I love reading about nature. I love nature writing. I have no idea what this is about, but I'm hopefully to find out this year. Genre number five, historical fiction. Oh, I love a good historical fiction. And this is like a big one, right? I know that Pages of Carolyn, she's so cute, I love her, loves Hamnet. So it's time, I need to read it. Genre number six, nonfiction. I, I watched the film Lost City of Z. It enthralled me. I watched the film Wind River. I was devastated. And David Graham wrote both um, of the books that inspired those two films. Wind River, I believe, is inspired by Killers of the Flower Moon. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty, I'm not even sure if this is a nonfiction. I just know that, like, it's time. I have to read something like this. Like, I want to read David Graham. I just know I need to read a David Graham. It's time. Genre number seven, short stories. I said, I'm going to read this so many times, I think. You're going to have a good time by Amy Baradale. <laughs> I need to take it seriously. I know I'm going to have a good time. I heard that this is Otessa Moshfeg's, like favorite book, one of her favorite books. This cover is amazing. It's time. I need to read it. It's pretty short, too. Genre number eight, food. Food writing is underrated. We should all read more food writing, more food books, whether that be cookbooks or like book books on food. And I've heard so much about Elizabeth David. I own an omelet and a glass of wine that I know I found through Katie Merchant, whose aesthetics are just incredible. 
I, yeah, I, I know nothing about Elizabeth David. I'm so intrigued to read an Elizabeth David finally. Genre number nine, manga. I miss manga. I miss non-serialized manga. One of my friends recommended this to me many years ago now, like an embarrassing long amount of time. And it's, it's time. I need to read this. It's, it's time. This is maybe the one book that's been on my shelf the longest that has me most ashamed to look at. Like I, I avert my eyes <laughs> because I know that I should have read this years ago and I didn't. It's time. Genre number 10. I call this a booktube hottie, <laughs> meaning that it ran through the gauntlet of booktube years ago. I bought it because of it and then just proceeded to ignore it. <laughs> and Severance by Ling Ma. Everyone's heard of this book. This like millennial pink cover too was really popular when it came out first. Ling Ma has a new collection of short stories out. This year, last year, I can't even keep up anymore. I'm like vaguely aware that it's set during a pandemic. Otherwise, I have no idea. And I'm kind of worried that the more time passes, I'm not, and I haven't, and this goes unread by me, it just will cease to remain relevant. So it's time, it's time. Genre number 11, essays. <sighs> Same, same as I said before, re-severance with Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Kong. Heard about it when it came out. Heard all the smart, smarty pants booktubers talk about it. I think this came out when like all of those Asian hate crimes were happening all at once. So this felt really relevant at the time. Worried that the longer I wait to read this, it might not feel relevant, although like, how could that possibly be the case? I don't know. I don't know. So it's time. I have to read it. Genre number 12, what I lovingly refer to as a pandemic baby, meaning that the writer wrote it during lockdown. It's the writer's thoughts and feelings, energy, purpose, drive. They felt during lockdown and chose to spend that time writing which I believe this is. Oh, please correct me if I'm wrong. But Delphi by Claire Pollard. Again, heard people talking about this. I bought it, didn't read it. It's time. I want to read it. I'm, you know, after Madeline Miller last year, I felt my inner Greek nerd get kickstarted again. I want to manifest more interest in ancient Greek studies, topics, which is really the reason why I bought it. It's time to read it. Genre number 13, mass market. I am not above a hyper entertaining, super plotty mass market book. Like I have been told from a handful of people over the years that I come across as like highbrow. I don't really, per I don't personally feel highbrow, think of myself as highbrow, but um, rest assured, I'm interested in reading anything and everything, so long as it's fun, so long as it promises me a good time. That's really my only criteria of a good book. I want to have fun while reading it. Some of my best times of fun is when I cry my eyes out. I've heard a lot of people shocked that I've never read Kite Runner, never heard of Kite Runner. The lovely woman who I purchased this from at the used bookstore, like, basically, shoved it into my hands and told me that I need to buy this, I need to read this. So yes, I, I agree. I, I do. I should. It's time. Genre number 14. What I will just, I will just for the moment call feminist, <laughs> which, you know, can include a, a wide range of books, but Maggie Nelson, The Argonauts. I haven't read any Maggie Nelson. I bought The Argonauts after so many people talked about how wonderful this is, how smart this is. It's time. I need to read it. Genre number 15. Again, what I will affectionately call youngin. <laughs> like basically like books that you might see on TikTok or something <laughs> that young people are talking about. I don't know. <laughs> but I believe Pizza Girl by Jean Young Frazier fits the bill. Correct me if I'm wrong again. I've heard that this is 
intense, emotional, weird, which I love. It's time. It's time. Genre number 16, the celebrity memoir. <laughs> I think I generally read a celebrity memoir at least once a year. My lovely brother-in-law gifted me this many years ago and I've yet to read it. I love Trevor Noah and what he's done at The Daily Show. Born a Crime is his memoir. I haven't read it yet. It's time. I need to read it. Number 17. Sci-fi? I believe that Ted Chiang's Exhalation fits in this category. I know that Claire reads books. Adores Ted Chang. I bought this book and another one. Haven't read it yet. It's time. I have to read it. I love me a good sci-fi. Like, kind of like, so long as the sci-fi remains meditative, I should say, as opposed to like super plotty. So that is my one criteria that I do look for in sci-fi. Like not necessarily for the escapist fantasy aspect of sci-fi, but for musings on humanity. I think this is it. I think this will fit that. I don't know. It's time. And genre number 18, what, for lack of a better name, I'm just calling British. <laughs> so for example, last year I read Barbara Pym's Excellent Women. I loved it. It was one of my favorites of the year. I never heard of Barbara Pym before. I never heard of Excellent Women before. I don't even remember how I heard about Good Evening, Mrs. Craven by... Molly Panter Downs. I believe it's set around or maybe after, maybe in between the world wars. I don't know, just like mid 20th century, which is a, which is one of my favorite time frames of history. I have no idea what this is about. I like the cover. I bought it. I'll read it. <laughs> Hopefully I'll love it. But I, I just want to read more about those stories in that time frame. And who knows? Maybe after reading a few, they all reek of British colonialism superiority, I'll hate it and I'll stop, but at least I'll know. <laughs> and the last five genres are, are authors who just, I read them last year. I didn't get around to reading more of them last year, but I definitely want to include this year. So number 19 is Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. I loved Angela Carter's writing in The Passion of New Eve. I didn't like love The Passion of New Eve, but I really enjoyed and really, was really impressed by The Passion of New Eve. So this I think is like her most famous book. I don't know, I believe this is another TikTok book. Who, <laughs> I don't know, it's time to know, it's time to read it, it's time. Number 20, Daphne du Maurier. I need to read another Daphne du Maurier novel. I've heard great things about Jamaica Inn, which I have in this lovely Farrago Modern Classics hardbound edition. I can't wait. Number 21, I should have prefaced that these five authors are classics. I need to read more classics this year. I grew up on classics. They were my bread. They were my blood. They were my life. <laughs> and the past few years, I've just been so caught up in all the new new that I need to feel myself again. I need to get back into it. And uh, with Angela Carter, with Daphne du Maurier, with Virginia Woolf, I have been appreciating modern classics a lot more too. And Edith Wharton is another writer that I, I really want to get into this year. Like I really want to read The Custom of the Country, which I have in this triple triple feature edition. <laughs> I've already read House of Mirth, loved it. Want to read The Custom of the Cu Country. Hopefully I also get to The Age of Innocence. But isn't this book so lovely? Gorgeous. It's time. I have to read more Edith Wharton. <sighs> Number 22, Jane Austen. I did not read a single Jane Austen for years, for years. I've never read Persuasion. I watched that god-awful Netflix movie with Dakota Johnson. I need to read this. <laughs> I have to, <laughs> I have to read this. 
and number 23, Leo Tolstoy. I know you're probably thinking, bitch, where the fuck is your War and Peace video, but <laughs> it's coming. I love Leo Tolstoy, love War and Peace. I've read, I've heard that some people prefer Anna Karenina and this is my husband's copy of Anna Karenina. So I have to, I have to see for myself which one I prefer, what I feel about the two. It's time. It's time for so much, but it's time. <laughs> So these 23 books, really, it could be there could it could be replaced by so many other other books that I actually currently own in my bookshelves and I recently put up these sexy new bookshelves that just fit so perfectly on my wall. They're not in their correct order. I don't feel that they are. And really it's just because, I don't know, I have, there's so many unread, how I should shelf them, organize them, which is why I'm trying to read more of what I own already. So this is just like the tentative shelving that I'm showing you just for funsies, for a peek, <laughs> for a sneak peek. And I mean, I try to organize them in some manner where I put by publishers, you know, by the Virago Modern Classics hardbound editions, by manga. I have an entire row of Korean American, Korean books that I try to pre order to support Korean writers, to support Asian writers. So I'm showing you because this is really a call for help. I want you to help me. <laughs> If you see anything that you've read already and that you think would be a better fit in any of the genres that I've got going on, please, please tell me in the comments. Please offer me any suggestions on how, on where things should go. I mean, really, once I kind of put books together like by like, the rest of them are just shoved in there so that they're not on the floor or on any other surface. <laughs> And yeah, this, this isn't gonna remain this way. I just, this is the only way that I can know where a book is and that I can relative, that I can find a book relatively quickly.
So thank you so much for watching. I hope that everyone's going to have an amazing 2023 reading year. I'll see you very soon.